In Chicago on Friday, 55-year-old Alton Logan, who has spent 26 years in prison for a murder he did not commit, was exonerated. Over the years, who knows how many Americans have been wrongly convicted and imprisoned or even executed. And even when the mistake is realized, as it was for Alton Logan, what then? Kelly Cobiea reports our Sunday morning cover story. At 55, Beverly Monroe was practically central casting for an accomplished middle-class mom. I had a great life, absolutely great life. I had a super job, career. I had my own home, I was very financially secure. My uh, son was living with me and going to college, going back to college. Um, my daughter, Katie, had just finished law school. And my youngest daughter, Shannon, was a senior at William & Mary. Things could not have been better. And then this happens. Yes. In March of 1992, Monroe found her longtime companion, Roger de la Bird, dead in his Virginia home, a bullet in his head, a pistol by his side. By all appearances, it was a suicide. But the police told Beverly Monroe she was suspected of murder. I had no experience, no thought of ever being accused of anything. I mean, it's, it's incomprehensible. It was equally incomprehensible to Beverly's daughter. But as a young lawyer beginning a new job, Kate Monroe also knew that incomprehensible did not make her mother's conviction impossible. I think I understood immediately when mom was charged that she could be convicted. And I understood when then she was convicted that she might never come home. It turns out she was half right. In October of 1992, a jury believed not her mother, but the prosecutor. You find the defendant guilty of first degree murder. Beverly Monroe was sentenced to 22 years in prison. You can be convicted, uh, as I was convicted, on not only no evidence, but just sheer speculation. Lawyer Kate Monroe quit her job and spent the next six years searching for proof of her mother's innocence. She found it in 1999. Prosecutors, she discovered, had withheld evidence showing that the likely cause of Roger de la Bird's death was in fact suicide. Seven years after her conviction, Beverly Monroe was released. The minute you're falsely accused, your life is gone. Your life as you knew it will never be the same. And then we had a wonderful Thanksgiving, the first one in a long time, and it was great. She was 62 and starting over. In that time, what do you think you lost? You lose everything that you had in a normal life. Uh, for me, it was house, job, career, income, uh, separation from my family. You lose all of those normal basics you lose health insurance, uh, life insurance, all of the security that you had. Monroe tried to get it all back, starting with a job. And though she had a good earlier job history, along with a master's degree in chemistry, she also had a prison record. So what I did, and also the most honest approach, is just to talk to people and tell them what happened. Did that work? No. <laughs> Everybody was extremely empathetic and shocked and stunned and um, didn't quite know what to do with that. But they didn't want to hire you on right Exactly. Away. I don't think any of these people realize what they're up against. Peter Newfeld is co-director of the Innocence Project, the group that, using DNA evidence, so far has helped free 235 people falsely convicted of serious crimes. 17 on death row. When they first come out, okay, uh, not only is the, the, the fame that comes with the media sort of uh, capturing that moment of freedom, uh, but also they feel, okay, now I've been vindicated, now everything will come to me finally that's been kept from me for so many years. So there's an expectation. Unfortunately, reality is different than expectations, particularly for these wrongly convicted. Just ask Larry Peterson. I always knew I would get out. I just didn't know when. I didn't know how. Peterson was found innocent and released more than three years ago after being sentenced to life plus 20 years for the 1987 killing and sexual assault of a young woman in New Jersey. 
And what was that day like? That oh. day you walked out? Oh man, it was joy. He was 37 when he went to prison. He was 54 the day he walked out, freed because of a DNA test that proved his innocence. What was it like being locked up knowing that you were innocent? Uh, prison is capital H-E-L-L. -L. We met Peterson in the parking lot of the truck driving school he'd just graduated from. He was hoping that after years of failure, it might lead to what he says would be his first job since being released from prison. When I went out to seek employment, any place that you go and they do a criminal background check, when they come back and I have murder up on my jacket, if you have rape up on your jacket, you can't get a job. But you were exonerated. What's that? <laughs> what does that mean? It simply means that you are out of prison. It doesn't mean that it erases your record. And of course, when they go to an employer and they bring the newspaper saying they were exonerated, the employer says, well, that's wonderful, but you know, you've got a 20-year black hole. And besides, even if you were innocent, you hung around some pretty mean characters for 20 years. I'm sorry you just don't have the skill set I need. I wish you well, but I can't hire you. And I can't give you this apartment. And I can't give you credit. Are you angry about all of this? Mad as hell, yes. Mad as hell, yes. Words cannot say how sorry I am for the past 23 years. 23 years. That's how long Thomas McGowan was in prison for a burglary and rape he didn't commit. April the 16th. Man, yeah, that was a good day. It was a good day right there. We met McGowan just 13 days after his release. I'm still on this high. It's the best high. It is. I want to know how that feels to get a job, how it feels to get out to amongst the people. You know, just a whole different thing now. Life. It's a whole different life. And while Thomas McGowan's life has changed... I'm not, I'm not down there. I'm not in a place no more with barbed wires and fences. I'm free. The world around him has changed even more. Ever been to a big store like this? But no, not like this, where all this type of th stuff is in here. Like, like, what's that right there, right in the front what's of What's this? It. Yeah. That little bubble down there? Yeah. Speaker. A speaker? That's your, your little touch pad. Moves the cursor around. You've seen that, right? No. You haven't seen that? What's no. new to you? Well, from right now, I'm standing right now, everything is. <laughs> Deep <laughs> like breath. Like a whole new world. <laughs> but it turns out that whole new world can be tougher than a prison yard. You're starting from scratch, aren't you? Right. But for 12 months now, Thomas McGowan has been searching for work. He's still unemployed. Larry Peterson finally found work as a delivery man. As for Beverly Monroe, she's working, but as a low-paid administrative assistant with no benefits. She says playing piano brings some peace. Still, she misses the lifestyle she lost. But it would not be enough to survive on if I did not have still some savings and um, Social Security. Her mother's ordeal has also changed daughter Kate. After Beverly Monroe was freed, Kate moved to Utah to head the Rocky Mountain Innocence Project. I've seen far worse cases. I've seen cases where, um, you know, two equally and wholly innocent people, police have manufactured physical evidence, uh, you know, uh, forensic scientists have manufactured evidence, um, uh, you know, prosecutors have known that their witnesses were lying. Last year, she watched Utah Governor John Huntsman sign a compensation law that she helped push through the state legislature. It gives exonerated prisoners about $35,000 for every year of false imprisonment, up to 15 years. Their criminal record is expunged. Thank you, Governor. Congratulations on the job. Very well done. It's an honor to be with you. Thank you. But 25 states have no such program. The other half provide a patchwork of compensation. The laws in Virginia provide nothing for Beverly Monroe. But Kate Monroe, who knows so well what can happen to innocent people wrongly convicted, still considers her mother lucky. 
the reality is this this is a this is a, a triumphant story. We had a happy ending, and um, and so if anybody were to say, you know, your mom's doing really well off, considering, I would say absolutely. Well, I think most people believe it'll never be me. Well, I thought that too. And I can now tell anybody in this country, including the prosecution and anyone else, it can happen to anyone, regardless of your economic status, regardless of your education, regardless of your record, um, it can happen to you.